Hello all, I am Abhin Sundar, MS17204 from Department of Physical Sciences and I will be giving you a presentation on magnetic refrigeration. Firstly, I will introduce you to the concept of magnetic refrigeration, its historical background, then I will go through magnetocaloric effect and the refrigeration cycle. Its advantages and applications will be discussed in the later part of the presentation followed by conclusions. So what is magnetic refrigeration? It is a cooling technology based on the principle of magnetocaloric effect. This technique can be used to attain extremely low temperatures as well as in the ranges used in common refrigerators. It uses magnetic properties of certain materials like paramagnetic salts such as uh, cesium magnesium nitrate to produce the effect of refrigeration. By varying magnetic field strength, the entropy changes and we get a cooling effect to near absolute zero temperatures. So which, this makes actually liquefaction of gas quite easier. The best thing about this process is that it is very much environmental friendly. It does not emit harmful gases like uh, CFCs and HCFCs, which is actually used in the conventional refrigerators. And so this helps in protecting the ozone layer, which is actually very much important for our living. So let's go through a bit of history. So the magnetocaloric effect was first observed in pure iron by E. Warburg in the year 1881. The fundamental principles were suggested by P. Debye and William Giag in the year 1927. And they proposed an improved technique of cooling via adiabatic demagnetization. The first working magnetic refrigerators were constructed by Giag and McDougall for cryogenic purposes. Magnetic refrigeration was the first method developed for extreme low temperature cooling, but it can also operate in near room temperatures, but till then there was no proof. But in the year 1997, Schneider and Barclay, they demonstrated the first ever near room temperature proof of the concept of magnetic refrigerator. Great, right? So what is this magnetocaloric effect I'm talking about? So whenever we expose a magnetocaloric material to a changing magnetic field, there is a reversible change in temperature. Since this process is reversible, by magnetizing and demagnetizing, the material is heated or cooled without any involvement of pressure, which is very much different from the conventional refrigerators. So this MCE or magnetocaloric effect, it consists of material thermal response when subjected to a magnetic field change. It is an intrinsic property of all magnetic materials. So here is the animated version of this thing. So uh, as the material is magnetized, it heats up. And as soon as we remove the magnetic field, it cools down. So you can see from this animation, short animation. So what we see is all magnet, the mat materials, they bear a property called Curie effect. So when the temperature of the magnet is increased from lower to higher ranges, at certain temperature, the magnet loses its magnetic properties. This temperature is called Curie temperature and it is not constant, it is material dependent, but the material regains all its properties once the temperature drops below the Curie temperature. As we increase the input energy, the orientation of the magnetic dipoles in a magnet starts losing orientation. So let us see this effect with the help of an animation. So if you see here, as soon as we switch on the magnetic field, the material gets heated up and what we see is the magnetic dipoles, they align together. But as soon as we switch off the magnetic field, the alignment of the magnetic dipoles, they get randomized, giving it a cooling effect. Let us see this video again. So we increase the magnetic field, the material heats up, and as soon as we remove the magnetic field, the material cools down. Here, the ordering of the spin is due to the change in magnetic field. These changes in orientation, this they result in changes in the entropy of the system, which is defined as the degree of randomness of the system. So here in our system, this, that is the magnetic system, the entropy consists of two parts. The one is the magnetic entropy and the other one is thermal entropy. So now we'll use this concept of, you know, all these entropies to see how the magnetic refrigeration cycle actually works. So if you see here, it is a TS curve, which is similar to the conventional vapor cycle refrigeration processes. It is quite similar, it is quite analogous to it, but let's see what are the processes involved in the cycle. 
So there are four processes involved in this cycle. If you see here, process one to two, process two to three, three to four, and four to one. I'll describe one by one all these processes in detail. The first process is called adiabatic magnetization. Here, without the changes in the heat, the magnetic field strength is increased, which decreases the magnetic entropy. But to compensate, the thermal entropy increases. This results in heating of the magnetic material. If you see here, the process one to two shows the same. Secondly, it is the process that we use is isomagnetic cooling. So here, the magnetic field is held constant to prevent the dipoles from reabsorbing the heat. Here, if you see the process two to three, is shown in this graph. Next is the adiabatic demagnetization, and this is the process which gives the cooling effect. So when we decrease the magnetic field strength, the total entropy again remains constant because both the thermal and the magnetic entropy they compensate each other effect, which results in cooling of the magnetic material. This is described as the most important step here. Here, if you see the process three to four describes the same. Finally, the process that we use is isomagnetic heating. Here, it is described as the process four to one. So the magnetic field is held constant to prevent the material from reheating. The material is placed in thermal contact with the environment to be refrigerated, and because the material is cooler than the refrigerator environment, the heat energy migrates into the working magnet material. So, what are the advantages of using this technology or this effect? Let's see. So, firstly, we don't need a compressor, right? Did you see any compressor? No. so there is no need of any refrigerant gas and this method is a low pressure operation and it requires low running cost an experimental study says that the energy requirement is 35% less than the conventional refrigerators moreover we can attain temperatures around 4k that is very low temperature cooling is also possible and this magnetic refrigeration is highly efficient than the conventional vapor cycle refrigeration uh, i'm abbreviated as vcr so it is very much environmental friendly and this could possibly be a step to conserve earth which is you know the only planet harboring life so why not use this technology so there are many possible applications we can use this in cryogenic engines the magnetic domestic refrigerator the air conditioners in buildings and houses offices everywhere we can use this technology we can use this technology in plug and display cabinets in supermarkets moreover professional kitchen equipments in restaurants and catering businesses we can use this technology there beverage coolers you know in drinking industries it can be very much useful there ice cream cabinets in food retails and food industries it could be a lot of help in that area so all and all what we see is the, if is this technology is developed more it can be of great use both domestic and commercial so it is a very promising technology manufacturers believe that magnetic fridges uses about half of the energy of the traditional system permanent magnet inside it they don't need any you know the outside energy to create magnetic field plus magnetic refrigeration is not still i mean it is on the process of you know getting ready so it is not available in the market but i think it is a technology to keep an eye on for the next 5 to 10 years and because of its potential to reduce energy and operate without environmentally affecting refrigerants it it makes it very exciting proposition to use this technology so this is how i'll conclude my presentation thank you for listening to me